what it means that is not a mere coincidence that after these people confiscated the Ark of God's Covenant, they were struck with these emeralds. The same way that in the end, after the law of God has been held in contempt and even attempts made to change it mm -hmm. by the by the Antichrist power, exactly. the first plague to fall upon the unbelieving exactly. avoids. Thank you very much. When the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord God of Israel had come from the land of Philistia and reached the borders of Israel at Beth Shemesh, the people out of what we may think is idle curiosity gaze onto the Ark and are slain a great number of them. When did God start being against people who see? Isn't curious the part of God's weapons in winning us to Him? Why this happened? We shall find out today's episode of The Microscope. I am Benjamin Habasa and this is The Microscope, a program where we take a deeper and closer look at biblical events and characters and in the end realize that these are not mere stories. Welcome, dear Microscope viewer, to another episode. This is an extension of the previous episode we had on the life of Uza and his ramifications of his actions to us on the present day and to Israel of then. I am back with uh, Elder Singh Milka. You are very much welcome. Thank you, Brother Benjamin. Yeah, we have great event in, uh, not to call you Elder Sai or anything. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things we have learned. Yes. Uh, from where we ended last time, the Ark of God had been captured and uh, abducted by the Philistines and taken to the temple of their chief god, Dagon, in the province of Ashdod. Though all looks like it is doom and gloom and God has been defeated, and yet in God's infinite plan, this was his mighty move. We have heard some amazing words from a book called the Patriarchs and the Prophets. Page 586, the first paragraph. But the Lord had not wholly cast aside his people, nor he would he long suffer the exaltation of the heathen. He had used the Philistines as the instrument to punish Israel, and he employed the ark to punish the Philistines. It was a two-way deal on God's side. In times past, the divine presence had attended it to be the strength and glory of his obedient people. That invisible presence would still attend it. The ark was not alone. To bring terror and destruction to the transgressors of his holy law. The Lord often employs his bitterest enemies to punish the unfaithfulness of his professed people. The wicked may triumph for a time as they see Israel suffering chastisement. But the time will come when they too must meet the sentence of a holy, sin hating God. Whatever iniquity is cherished, there, swift and erring, the divine judgments will follow. And here we stand in Philistia. Elder, 
where are we heading now? Yep. Thank you, uh, Brother Vinja, and uh, for that beautiful reading from uh, Sister White. Um, we looked at how the Ark of the Covenant was taken by the Philistines. And uh, the Philistines, they thought that it would be a, a symbol of charm, I mean, good luck and fortune. So they took the Ark of the Covenant to their god, Dagon. And you will see the statue of Dagon fall prostrate upon its face on the ground in front of the Ark of the Covenant. No, that's powerful. The temple was so big it could, it could have fallen in any other Anywhere. direction. Mm -hmm. It falls face down exactly. before the Ark of God. Now, that also takes us to another important understanding. In the presence of God, I want to underline that, in the presence of God, we always fall prostrate face down. And uh, I have seen this happen in uh, pagan temples because I grew up in a community of pantheism, community, uh, where 87% of the population is Hindus. So in the presence of the devil, you fall backwards. They, they cannot fall prostrate. Fall backwards. They fall backwards. That sounds like something I've seen in churches. Thank you very much. Oh. Precisely, that's where I'm going <laughs> now. Okay, but that's not the intention, but I'm just trying to mm. put that across to well, the viewers yes. and to understand. That. In the presence of God, mm. you can see examples right from the book of Genesis up to Revelation. Oh, yes. Even our great men, mm -hmm. patriarchs, prophets, mm. kings, mm. they all fell prostrate mm -hmm. at his feet. So, so interesting. In fact, it makes me also remember David and Goliath. Mm -hmm. David hits Goliath with a stone in the forehead. Exactly. Now, a stone in the forehead, if you fall backwards, mm -hmm. by the force of the stone. Mm -hmm. But the guy again still comes forward and falls exactly. prostrate. Exactly. The God of David. Exactly. Oh. So, <clears throat> well, that is also an an, uh, another analogy where the, the stone is the uncut end the stone of Jesus stone Christ. Oh, okay. That stone that David threw, mm. it represents Jesus Christ. Oh. Like you remember the, the, the image that Nebuchadnezzar saw? Oh, yes. What was the last thing that struck the image? It was a, a stone. stone cut, not cut off the human hand. Exactly. Mm. So it's the stone. So David threw one stone and that stone was Jesus Christ. Mm. And the Bible says the stone sunk. Mm. Oh, yes. It did, did not bounce. To his temple. Mm. <laughs> it, it sunk. <laughs> so it was like a bullet. Mm. It went straight. Boom, it went inside. Okay, so that's for another story. Oh, yes, yes. All right. Now, in the presence of God, falling prostrate face on the ground shows humility. Yes. And that's, that God's power mm. is supreme. And you're subjecting yourself to that supreme power, that supreme power and majesty. Mm -hmm. So they can also fall, fell face on the ground. Yeah. So when you see people falling ah like that, mm -hmm. it's paganism. That's why I'm saying like, you know, not only in churches, but where does it come from? Mm -hmm. From the pagan worship, they all fall this way, backwards. Mm -hmm. And you can see in churches, some pastors, they just show all those gimmicks and... People just oh, whole world, you know, flip over mm. backwards. No, that's not the spirit of God. In the presence of God, mm. signs of humility mm. and subjecting your own self mm. to the power and authority of God is to fall prostrate. So that is the reason why when the when the temple was closed, this happened in the night. Yes, yes. No so, man can be credited exactly position. Exactly. Mm. So we know we it was the angels of God. Oh yeah, mm. push that thing down. I mean, revealing that the power of God is supreme and it is about the gods of the Philistines. And that God is not a God restricted by geography. That exactly. He works in, in Israel uh -huh. territory, and when He comes here, He is subject. Yes. Mm. So here, mm. now they thought that the Ark of the Covenant would do magic for them, like how it did for the Israelites. But now see what happens. Let's read from the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 5, 
and verse 5 onwards. 5. Mm -hmm. Therefore, neither the priests of Dagon, nor any that came to Dagon's house, tread on the threshold of Dagon in Ashdod unto this day. Mm -hmm. That's a curse. But the hand of the Lord was heavy upon them of Ashdod, and he destroyed them, and smote them with him rods, even Ashdod and the coasts thereof. Now, that is the first episode mm -hmm. of the wrath of God that they are experiencing. They thought that this could give them fortune. Mm -hmm. But the, it started with their God being Struck. slowed down completely, Whoa. smote down. And now thereafter, mm -hmm. they are left with no God to worship. worship. Now, the power of God mm -hmm. is there in the land of Ashdod. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says it smote them. Oh. So that is episode number one, mm. Ashdod. Mm. So Ark of the Covenant mm. from the Temple of God, mm. okay? Yes. It is taken to Ashdod, Ashdod. Mm. which is a Gentile, mm. or in other words, an unbeliever's Rebel. land. Mm. People who rebelled mm. against. Mm. But technically, mm. they sh if they had, I'm just assuming, because it could have been a blessing. Even as much as the gospel is now taken to the Gentiles, it, is, it would be a blessing only if they accept it. Mm. Even as much as we sing and evangelize and preach about the word of God, how many of these Gentiles accept it? No, that's so powerful. In other words, God first gives them a demonstration of their own God exactly. before bringing plagues to them in a person their Precisely. own Precisely. If they had seen their God Dagon fall, and picked up the pieces and threw them away and started worshipping the God of the ark, they would have been saved. Ashdod would have been the first Christian era, I would say. <laughs> but they still rebelled. Oh, yes, yes. And they said, no, 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 no. Mm. So that is the first instance, the land of Ashdod. Could it be that it is not a mere coincidence that after these people confiscated the ark of God's covenant, they were struck with these emeralds, the same way that in the end, after the law of God has been held in contempt and even attempts made to change it mm -hmm. by the by the Antichrist power, exactly. the first plague to fall upon the unbelieving exactly. boils. Thank you very much. Oh. That is precisely the parallel that we can see. Yes. I know the Bible is a it's a, it's like a puzzle. Yes, you can fit everything perfectly. And it gives a beautiful picture. So mm -hmm. nothing has ever happened from the book of Genesis up to Revelation for, by chance. Oh, yeah. It is all for a reason. Though the writers had no idea. Exactly. God knew that in the end, mm -hmm. things would fit together. Exactly. That's beautiful. Yeah. So we are blessed to have both the New Testament and the New and Old Lord, Testament yes. to understand this puzzle. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, I, even David, they, he did not understand this. I know. Could it? Okay. So mm -hmm. I think we, have, we are such a blessed generation to mm -hmm. have. This puzzle being solved mm. at every corner. Mm. Verse 7. And when the men of Ashdod saw that it was so, they said, The ark of the God of Israel shall not abide with us, mm -hmm. for his hand is so upon us and upon our God. No, they are defending. The God. Not only for us, but even for our God. So they have come to rescue their God. But it was the reverse. <laughs> <laughs> because they thought that, you know, they, now they are safeguarding Dagon. Their God. Oh, my. So, that, that's the, uh, the, the most pathetic thing that could ever happen. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, let's read ahead. <laughs> uh, verse 8. Mm -hmm. They sent their and gathered all the lords of the Philistines that's unto it. them mm -hmm. and said, What shall we do with the ark of the God of Israel? Mm -hmm. And they answered, Let the ark of the God of Israel be carried about unto Gath. Yes, now let's stop there. Now, like how David yes. called for the chosen men yes. and he discussed. Mm. That's what the book of First Chronicles chapter 13 says. Yes. He called them and he was asking them for counsel. What shall we do? What shall we do? Mm. The same way here, the Philistines also now gang up. They call oh, all the lords of the Philistines mm. and they say now, Ashdod, it is now ransacked. It's completely out. It's yeah. bankrupt. Every All the businesses have come to a standstill. People are dead. What do we do? Mm. Then they said, okay. Yes. There is another province, a very powerful one. Yes. That's the, the concubine mm. uh, place for Dagon. Yes. Let's take it to Gath. 
the gap. Mm. So they say, Oka, go ahead. Well, that was uh, verse 8. eight. Mm-hmm. Let me read it again. Yes. Actually. They sent their and gathered all the lords of the Philistines unto them and said, What shall we do with the ark of the God of Israel? And they answered, Let the ark of the God of Israel be carried about unto Gath. And they carried the ark of the God of Israel about thither. Mm, go ahead. Verse 9, And it was so that after they had carried it about, the hand of the Lord was against the city with a very great destruction. Mm-hmm. And he smote the men of the city, both small and great, and had emeralds in their secret part. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> sometimes God can be, can be so intentional. Uh-huh. And uh, to the extent, sometimes he comes off a bit sarcastic. Exactly. Mm. And see how the Spirit has ins- inspired uh, this to be written. Yes. Emeralds. Mm-hmm. They are not just boils. Mm. Uh, when you look at the, the signs behind emeralds, mm. they are like needles. Like the, the pain they inflict. The is pain, the... it's like a needle. And have you seen blackheads on faces? Like, you know, you press it and it comes out? Yes, yes. Yeah, they are like needles inside. So, now the Bible says, mm. it's a different way of, you know, inflicting pain. Yes. And it says, they had emeralds in their secret parts. <laughs> they can't sit. <laughs> so wait, how did they come to know that they had them? Because they couldn't see each other. Exactly. So one came up to the neighbor. N- nobody could sleep. And the neighbor said, me too. Yeah, exactly. Now you see, the whole town was only walking. Yes. Nobody was able to sit. <laughs> They could see no one sitting. Mm. They could see no one sleeping. Mm. So even in the night, people are walking. <laughs> now they say, why? What is wrong with you? No. No, no problem. You, Don't mind me. You, you mean you also have the same problem as I do? Because with those pain, it's like sitting on... A, a, on the middle. Exactly. The middle. Mm. And you, you know, some guy, I mean, someone who, who writes about it, he says... Some of them who are heavy, they couldn't even walk. So they were just standing on one point. <laughs> so they can't sit. Mm. They can't. You see, when we they read this, it's, it's so humorous, but understand the position mm. there. Mm. Imagine you go out of your house. Mm. Everyone is standing in one place. They can't move. <laughs> all the chairs in the city. No empty. chairs. Yes, all the chairs are empty. No boardroom meetings, mm-hmm. no annual general meetings. Yes. Whatever meetings, it's only by standing. <laughs> they can't sit. They are unable to walk. Yes. So people who, are, who manage to even get to the street, mm. they couldn't walk, but they are all standing like statues, looking at one another. I think that's another way of God creating an emergency. Like, uh, you have to act quickly. <sighs> act quickly before exactly. you can sit again. Yeah. Mm. So now Ashdod was finished. Yes. Here, now, Gath. Gath. They're all now stuck with emeralds. Yes. <laughs> now verse 10. Verse 10. Therefore, mm-hmm. they sent the ark of God to Ekron. Mm-hmm. Ekron again. Yeah. It's the third place. They are not learning a lesson. Mm-hmm. And came to pass, mm-hmm. as the ark of God came to Ekron, mm-hmm. that the Ekron is cried, cried out saying, ah, <laughs> they have brought the ark of God, <laughs> of the God of Israel to, this, to, eh, to us, mm-hmm. to slay us and our people. Mm-hmm. So they sent and gathered together all the lords of the Philistines mm-hmm. and said, Send away the ark of the God of Israel and let it go again to its own place. Its own, own place. place. Oh, yeah. Its own place. Mm-hmm. So it is only the Akronites. Mm-hmm. They understood. My yes. dear. <laughs> mm. At least we are able to walk and sleep and sit. Yes. Let's treasure our sitting ability for now. Exactly. <laughs> and they said, so mm. sense came. Now, the good thing is, at one point of time, sense will come. Amen. Sense will come. Mm. Even in the land of Philistines. Mm. So here, the Akronites, they say, please, let it not even come here. Yes. <laughs> Send it <laughs> to own its place. own place. I, I, I'm sure they may have been hoping when we send it back to Israel, they also get some emeralds. Uh-huh. Seems the ark is a bit exactly yeah, it has a software default uh-huh. problem. It mm-hmm. is now attacking instead mm-hmm. of protecting. Exactly. 
Mm-hmm. Send away the ark of God mm-hmm. of Israel and let it go again to its own place mm-hmm. that it slay us not mm-hmm. and our people. Mm-hmm. For there was a deadly destruction throughout all the city. The hand of hand God was of God. Yes. Now they understood eh, mm-hmm. the God of this Ark of the Covenant mm-hmm. is not a simple God. The God who owns this Ark of the Covenant mm-hmm. is even more powerful than they can have a God. Mm-hmm. Who understood? Ikronites. Yes. Because they saw what went through, what mm-hmm. the Ashtonites went through, mm-hmm. what people mm-hmm. in Gath went through. They said, ah, uh-uh. mm-hmm. let it be taken to its own place. I tell you that this is, this is evangelism 101. Mm-hmm. I would be shocked to find a person of Ikron mm-hmm. who lived at this time who didn't believe in the God of Israel. Exactly. If they ever go to hell, mm-hmm. like it's on them. Exactly. God sometimes can speak to us by blessings mm-hmm. given, mm-hmm. sometimes by blessings the drone. Exactly. Even in his judgment, so they seem so like so vindictive and mm-hmm. harsh. Yet they in themselves are tokens and messages of mercy. Exactly. Now this also reminds me of another instance mm-hmm. in the book of Exodus. Okay. Sorry, Genesis. Mm-hmm. Now here, this you see. It's not that God's plan to take the good news to the Gentiles was an afterthought. Mm-hmm. Yes. It was not the mm-hmm. plan of the New Testament. Mm-hmm. But he climaxed it there. Mm-hmm. But in the book of Genesis we read, when the Israelites were taken to, the, to Egypt, yes. the Akronites, mm-hmm. okay? Mm-hmm. The, God says, I will take you there for being a judgment to that nation. Mm-hmm. And that nation will I judge. Exactly. He says in the book mm-hmm. of Genesis. Yeah, chapter 15. Yeah. Exactly. So, oh. even children, I mean, the, when Joseph was taken to Egypt, mm-hmm. God had the plan of taking the good news to Joseph Egypt. Joseph was an evangelist. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So, he was a forerunner. Mm-hmm. He was the forerunner But he had to go through the life of Jesus Christ. When you compare Joseph and Jesus Christ, there are so many many parallels. parallels. So Joseph was actually the forerunner Mm. uh, taken to the land of Egypt. And God says, I I will take you there for 400 years Mm. such that I pass on a judgment to those guys. But when these guys went there, what happened? They became more Egyptians yeah. <laughs> than converting the Egyptians as the, the children Egyptians of God. evangelized it to them. Exactly. Mm. So that's one reason why we, even when they went out of Egypt, mm. so God gave them that time period. And they said, ah, ah, enough is enough. You guys have really gone too far. Mm. Let me now tell That's the reason they went. When God uh, coached Moses, he yeah. said, let him go and worship me. Mm. And I will in the wilderness, yeah. worship me. Mm. So God had to take them out. So it's the same thing now, even here, mm. God is giving them a lease. Mm. It is not by chance that the Ark of the Covenant was taken by Philistines. Mm. You see, when the Ark of the Covenant is so powerful, mm. it must have spoken to their heart. Mm. Right on the day when Ashdod, I mean the, the, the Dagon fell down. Yes. They didn't, they went ahead. Mm. He killed the Ashdod, the fellows in the Ashdod. Mm. They didn't repent even. They still went to Gath. Still, they didn't repent mm. until Akron, the, the Akronites, mm. oh, they, they, they said, uh-uh, yeah. enough is enough. Mm. Let it be taken to its own place. I, I like God's tendency to make use of every situation to save at least a soul. Exactly. And because uh, God would have wanted that Israel would retain his glory, mm-hmm. that Israel would be obedient, that the ark never has to be given up. But even when it has been kidnapped, mm-hmm. God says, okay, mm-hmm. the situation has come off like this. Mm-hmm. How can I, who can I save through this? Mm-hmm. They connect. Exactly. Let them receive it and be saved. Exactly. Let's read the uh, verse, I mean, chapter um, 6 and verse 1. Chapter 6 and verse 1. And the ark of the Lord was in the country of the Philistines seven months. Seven months. This, drama this is a lot been. of time. Exactly. Seven months is a lot of time, and this is a drama. When you count the number of days in the seven months, mm. it comes exactly to 230 days. 230. Now, can, does it ring a bell if you add another zero? Oh, yeah. <laughs> 2,300 days. Exactly. Mm. So, this ark so was oh, with the Philistines mm. for seven months. 
So the drama of taking to Dagen, Ashdod, Garth, ah, seven months. Mm. Now, verse three. And they said, if he send away the ark of the God of Israel, send it not empty, but in any ways, return him a trespass offering. <laughs> These guys. Uh -huh. Now, ah. they come together. You mm. see, when the Philistines came together to discuss this, mm. An author writes that some of the Philistines were in close proximity to the things done in Israel. Yes. The With offering. Trespass offering. Who could think of that? Exactly. Mm. <laughs> mm. And they say, now we should give them a trespass yes. offering. You know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then ye shall be healed. Mm. And then ye shall be healed. healed. Oh, oh. So they are expecting a miracle by giving him a trespass a offering. offering. Now, look at the way in which they had revered mm -hmm. and respected the God of the Ark of the Covenant. Yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. wow. Mm. And they had the faith, mm. the quantum faith. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's springing up. Uh -huh. And it shall be known to you mm. why his hand is not true. Why? From you. It will give you answer. Mm. Why? Uh -huh. Then, mm. said they, what shall be the trespass offering? which we shall return to him. Mm -hmm. They answered, mm. five golden emeralds. Now look at the pun there. Mm -hmm. They made, you know, they were inflicted with what? With emeralds. Mm -hmm. and they so made... the, they come out with the image of the emerald uh -huh. in gold. Mm. Mm -hmm. Elder, are you trying to make me think of the, <laughs> the bronze serpent? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Wow. Let me first uh, absorb um, that for a moment. Yes, yes. And I shall, mm -hmm. we shall know more about it mm -hmm. after the break. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Tabusa <laughs> Bible chigambo cha katonda. Ee e, chuo mungu che chuo kache yeta goku soko kutegeera. Ata che yeta goku semba yoku kutegeera. Wabanga na tegeera Bible. Dala Yesu katonda. Bible yegami. Ebi intu vya nabi ya akore buwa ye. Bie tulaba na amaso. Nibe tuta kura chi? Nibe tulaba. Kakati oyotumu jite chi. Agu haba ansidamu. Okusinza, chechi. God first, God last, God in everything. That's the simple definition of the word worship. Evi vyo na, nevi dala vingi, bidibu amu, wanuku 3 FDNTV, mu program yo, baibuli, egamba chiki. Buli kaungezi, sabi tinge edumi, kusawe mu, atene bidibu amu, Uli Wednesday, kusawa muenda. Nango muwele zao, ilo mtestesu wa programu eni. Maureen na mtedi. Yangu tuige, atenga wetu nyumira.
Welcome back viewers of Microscope. Thank you for staying with us into the exciting journey of the scriptural characters and specifically Uzzah under the theme Quantum Faith. And we are still uh, uh, reading from the book of uh, 1 Samuel chapter 6 mm. and verse 3. Mm. Yes, my brother, we can read it. Yes, we had just finished verse 3 and mm. also going to verse 4. Verse 4, verse 4. Mm. Mm. Okay, verse 4. Mm. And said they, what shall be the trespass offering mm -hmm. which we shall return to him? Mm -hmm. They answered, mm -hmm. five golden emeralds mm -hmm. and five golden mice mm -hmm. according to the number of the lords of the Philistines. Mm -hmm. For one plague was on you all and on your lords. Mm -hmm. You can go ahead. Wherefore shall you make images of your emeralds and images of your mice that mother land? Mm -hmm. And ye shall give glory unto the God of Israel. For adventure he will lighten his hand from off you and from off your gods mm -hmm. and from off your land. Let's stop there. Now, when you look at the way in which they are, they are able to think only with what they know. Mm -hmm. Immediately they'll have to make a statue, make a images, yes. the images of the, the emeralds mm -hmm. and the mice. Mice is their uh, totem. Of the, the Philistines. Philistines. Yes. Oh. So that's when the, the, it's, it represents the lords, hey. the five lords of the Philistines. Oh, the Philistines. Mm -hmm. So they say that's why they say now let that would represent the five of you. Okay. But how many? They would be like we are going along exactly uh, as um, as emissaries. Uh -huh. oh, okay. Yes. So now, mm. but when you look at the number of provinces that really got affected, that were only two: mm. Ashdod, Ashdod and, and Gath. Gath. Yes. The remaining the the, the other three they oh, escaped. Yes, mm. But they said no. Let's be together. Yes. Because together as Philistines we trespassed. Yes. So representing the three mice, I mean the three lords of the Philistines, mm. let's send them a mice made of gold. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, we go to verse 6. Yes. This is the question. Mm. With a lot of power. Mm. Wherefore then, or why then, mm. do you harden your hearts? Mm -hmm. As the Egyptians and Pharaoh hardened their hearts, mm. when he had wrought wonderfully mm. among them, mm -hmm. did they not let the people go and they depart? Wait, I thought in Egypt it is God who had had it, there was had. Well, permits. Yes. It, it's, you know, God does not have, okay, I can, God has the power to harden, mm. but he mm. permits you mm. to your own will. It is not, it's not his mode of operation no, that no, he no, works no. that way. No, it's a mm. choice. Mm. So if you choose to harden yourself, mm. so when, when the Bible says God hardened, mm. sometimes, you know, we also read, the evil spirit from God yeah, came upon Saul. Saul. <laughs> then we can't say now, how can evil spirit come from? He permitted it. God keeps an evil spirit there in store <laughs> to keep sending and torturing people. Well, it's just, it's, that's how God operates. He gives uh, us the power of choice. So for all these seven months, mm -hmm. they have been hardening their hearts against exactly. all palpable evidence. Mm -hmm. And here it was too much. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Verse 7. Mm -hmm. Now therefore, mm -hmm. make a new cut. Let's stop there. What did we read? It says make a new cart. Make a new cart. Mm, I'm seeing stuff. Mm -hmm. A new cart. Whose idea? idea the idea of the Lord is of the Philistines. Why? Because mm -hmm. in pagan culture, mm -hmm. they put their gods in carts. Mm -hmm. Even today when you go to India, mm -hmm. Now, this practice I have seen even in the Roman Catholic Church. Mm. Mother Mary's statue is in a cart. Yes. So they pull the cart around the whole town. Uh, they put Jesus Christ's statue on a cart. Mm. And all the disciples, each of them, they have a cart. Some of them, maybe because of their poverty, some disciples are put two, three in one cart. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but technology has come a long way and now we have cars. Why don't we use cars? Though? They still put them in carts. They still put them in carts, and um, <clears throat> uh, one uh, astonishing fact mm -hmm. is some of the pagan temples, mm -hmm. they have a cart mm -hmm. made of wood, wood that can be as high as a six-story building. For which size of a god? For their gods, not just one god. Oh, 
okay. So on the sides of the cart, they would decorate mm. images. There would be thousands and thousands of oh. images of their gods. Yeah. Carved. Mm. Imagine a huge cart. Mm. That's a powerful so, Exactly. And it's huge. And I've seen even in the, how, the, my town where I grew from, mm. the biggest, I think they have the whole town, they have, uh, okay, we have um, a temple that was built in the 16th century and uh, and um, the temple has four carts huge ones huge it can it's about the the biggest one is about six story building high it's huge so what happens is people thousands of them they pull it so those carts are connected with the ropes mm. as big as this. And the, like the width, the gas of the, the rope? Yeah, the, 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 the yes. Okay. And it's huge. Mm. So people, thousands of them, they pull the rope. Mm. And that's when the, the cart would move, made of wood. Mm. I'm imagining even those days, it's a pagan practice. It has been there for mm. right, time yes. immemorial. Mm. So now the idea, because that's what they know. Mm. Sure. They say, now let's make a new cart. Mm. Put the thing on that. Uh -huh. Read it. Wow. We are coming to verse 8. It was the, verse 8. No, 7 still. The second yeah, we are part. still on 7. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now therefore make a new cart. Mm -hmm. And take two milk kine mm -hmm. on which they have come no yoke. Mm -hmm. And tie the kine mm -hmm. to the cart. And bring their calves home mm -hmm. from them. Let's stop there. Could you simplify the English? Okay. Milk kine. It's the fresh... Cows. Cows. The kind is actually oxen. Oxen. Because cows don't, they are not put under yoke. Okay. It's the oxen. oxen. So kind refers to oxen. Mm. When, we, when, we, when we talk about two milch kind, mm. meaning like they had never been put under yoke okay. before. Okay. So this is the first time they are pushing, but they are trained to pull. Mm. Okay. They are trained to pull. Mm. So like, you know, say for example, the, the, the oxen, there is a way you can use their whip and then the, the, the rope. Yes. And when you turn the rope this side, they, yes. they turn this side. Because they've been trained, they know how to Exactly. Do. So they're trained, mm -hmm. but they had never pulled Anything. officially. Okay. okay. So that's what they, it says. So mm -hmm. the, take two milch kind mm -hmm. on which they had no had come no yoke mm -hmm. and tie the kind to the cart yes. and bring their calves home from them. Okay. So in other words, separate them from their calves mm -hmm. so that they have the longing to go back to their calves exactly. so they don't want to go. Exactly. In other words, the Philistines are actually putting God to a drill, mm -hmm. to a test, mm -hmm. same way like uh, Elijah says, mm -hmm. for my sacrifice, mm -hmm. first born it, but make sure, make sure it's impossible humanly mm -hmm. for me to light a fire on Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay. Now, when you read this one, mm. uh, we let's go now to Second Samuel. Okay. I'm starting to pity David. I'm starting to feel David's problem. Mm. Mm. Second Samuel, yes, we are on chapter six. Mm. Okay. <clears throat> let's read uh, uh, Second Samuel chapter six and verse three. Verse three. Mm. And they set the ark of God upon. And you cut. Who? This time who? These are Israelites. Israelites. Led by David himself. Exactly. Behaving very philistinically. Exactly. So we have understood there. Yes. So the problem mm -hmm. is it has been a cascading problem. Mm. Mm. Uzzah climaxed it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Beyond which God said, I, I, I'm not going to tell them to you guys beyond this. Mm. So, that was error number one. Mm. And this error should be more pronounced. Exactly. Since this coming from a man so privileged with the knowledge of the things of God. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. All right, let's now read, the, go ahead to First Samuel chapter 6 and verse 8. Ah, yes, First Samuel 6. Now verse 8, the Bible says, And they take... And take the ark of the Lord and lay it upon the cart and put the jewels of gold, those are the emirates, mm -hmm. which he returned him for a trespass of him, mm -hmm. in a coffer by the side thereof mm -hmm. and send it away mm -hmm. that it may 
go. Mm -hmm. Now these people don't even want to open it. They are putting it on the side. Exactly. It's to plant reverence. Uh -huh. mm. Verse 9. So even them, mm -hmm. they they just let it and put, because they don't know what would happen because they were scared. Yes. He so said, now this has caused enough pain to us. Mm. Let's just keep the trespass offering by the side and let it go. And the goal is to see, leave them. Exactly. What them. they want is just to leave that thing, you know, mm. that the Ark of the Covenant must leave them. Mm -hmm. Verse 9, and see, if it goes up by the way of his own cost mm -hmm. to Beth Shemesh, then he has done us this great evil. Mm -hmm. But if not, then we shall know that it is not his hand that smote us. It was a chance that happened. God, God. is listening yeah. to their conversation. Them giving him conditions. Like conditions, terms. and God <laughs> is listening. Mm. Eh? And they mm. say, now we'll put this thing, it should go without a man. Yes. Automatically, it should find a way mm. and go to Beth Shemesh. Yes. If it does not, then whatever happened was by chance. Wow. But if it goes like mm. this, mm. it is the hand of that God of that Ark of the Covenant. Baseline, these kind or these cows, these oxen, mm -hmm. number one, they have never done this work. Exactly. They have never mm. drawn a cut. So you can say they know the way they are just taking it naturally. Exactly. Number two, their cows have been taken from them. Mm -hmm. So by idea, they don't want to go. Exactly. They want to stay back stay home. Back. So they're making impossibility yes. to appear as if all the thing, whatever happened, was yes, by, by natural chance. causes. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so they're giving a very hard condition there. To see, let's wait and look at these guys. We're going behind, mm. watching, watching to watch what where it is going. Uh huh. Ah, verse ten. Mm. And the men did so, mm. and took two milk kine mm. mm. and tied them to the cart mm. and shut up their calves at home. Mm. And they laid the ark of the Lord upon the cart, mm. and the coffer with the mice of gold mm. and the images of their emeralds. Mm. Twelve. Mm. <clears throat> The climax of the story. Mm -hmm. And the kind took the straight way <laughs> to the way of Beth Shemesh and went along the highway, mm -hmm. lowing as they went, mm -hmm. and it turned not aside to the right or to the left. And the lords of the Philistines went after them and to the border. And to the of border Beth of Beth Shemesh. I like the way these cows are cooperating. It's the angels of God. I'm seeing this bit over. Uh -huh. They went lowing as they went. Mm -hmm. They went crying out. Yes. Drawing attention. Exactly. Come and see what's yeah. happening. More and more. Yeah. They were just lowing, you know, mm. attracting. A, man, it was the angels. And the Lord is behind you. We are following at a distance. Yes, at a distance. Must have been a great process. Exactly, of course. Mm. Because I'm sure they remain the remnant of the Ashdod mm. and the remnant of God. Yes. And the people of Ekron. Where they must also be there. Of course. Yes. So they wanted to still keeping a distance. Exactly. Avoid another emerald. Uh -huh. <laughs> so mm. that that was it. Mm. Mm. So they went up to the border of Beth Shemesh. Mm. Now verse thirteen. Now verse thirteen is starting to cause problems here. Mm -hmm. And they of Beth Shemesh mm. were reaping their wheat harvest in the valley. Not knowing what was happening. Mm. Mm. For them, they didn't get any emerald. Nothing. So. Mm. And they lifted up their eyes and saw the ark mm -hmm. and rejoiced. And rejoiced to see it. To see it. The Israelites. Mm -hmm. 14. Mm. And the ark, the cart came to the field of Joshua, mm -hmm. a Beth Shemite, mm -hmm. and stood there, and stood there, where there was a great stone. Mm -hmm. And they cleaved the wood of the cart mm -hmm. and offered the kind a burnt offering mm. unto the Lord. So the same kind that brought the ark of the covenant was sacrificed, sacrificed. in the field of Joshua. Yes. Now verse 15. Listen. <laughs> and the Levites. Thank you. And who? The Levites. The Levites took down the ark of the Lord mm. and the coffer that was with it. Okay. Now, when it came to Beth Shemesh, mm. they of Beth Shemesh were reaping and they looked at the ark, mm. but they did not touch it. Yes. Why? Because they know. Yes. So, so Beth Shemesh is near the border of border the Philistines. Town. Ex exactly. So perhaps they had some little pieces of news, maybe? Well, we do not know how God operates. Sometimes mm. maybe it was an era of not WhatsApp, no email, <laughs> no television. So I think... Okay. Uh, and moreover, Philistines, they were also... It was a matter of prestige for them. Mm. 
oh, not letting Israel not know. Not broadcasting their problems. Exactly, because yeah. they said, Shh, let the problem stay with us. Oh, oh, oh. Because if the Israelites come to know, they are going to rejoice over yeah. this. So let's keep going. They know they have got a victory without fighting. Exactly. <laughs> so That's you, you see, this them. is just a gap of seven months. Mm. Because it was the Philistines who overthrew Israel yeah. and took over the Ark of the Covenant. Mm. So the Israel should not know mm. what pain these guys have gone through because of the Ark of the Covenant. So they kept to themselves. Mm -hmm. But they were low. But it was only later they came to know, of course. Mm. So when they saw the Ark coming, they all rejoiced. So now verse 15 happens before mm. the sacrifice of the kind. Oh, okay. okay. Okay, so when you look at the chronology. Get it, get it. Mm. So it was, uh, uh, verse 15 happens before mm. verse 15. I mean, okay. verse 14 actually. Oh. Uh -huh, go ahead. And the Levites took down the Ark of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Because mm. they couldn't have exactly. burnt in the wood yeah. when the Ark was still on them. Exactly. Mm. Mm. So in other words, I'm mm. just imagining when the when the Bethshemites guys, when they were in the field, they, they called for the Levites. For the Levites yes. They called for the Levites. They said, now we have seen this the Ark of the thing, you know, uh -huh. Tell us what to do now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Levites took down the Ark of the Lord and the coffer that was with it, wherein the jewels of gold were, and put them on the great stone. Mm. And the men of Beth Shemesh offered burnt offerings mm. and sacrificed sacrifices the same day mm. unto the Lord. Unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. 16. Mm -hmm. And when the five lords of the Philistines had seen it, mm -hmm. they returned to Ekron the same day. Exactly. Full of news. Mm -hmm. Verse uh, uh, no, uh, So okay. we have seen that mm. now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we have seen the Ark of the Covenant. Mm. From the land of the Philistines coming yes. back to Israel mm -hmm. after seven months. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, after coming, after bringing the the Ark of the Covenant, mm -hmm. something must be done with the covenant. I mean, the Ark of the Covenant. Mm -hmm. Now, the question is, where should we take it? You remember, the Philistines said, to "Let it go place. to its own place." Yes. So for them, they knew it is the property of the Israelites. Mm -hmm. Let's leave it to them. Yes. Let them do what they want. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now the question is, mm -hmm. where should we take it? Okay. Should it remain in Beth Shemesh? Mm -hmm. Should it go to Jerusalem? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Th that's the question that they were having. Mm -hmm. Now let's read. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, let's read uh, verse um, 19. 19, yeah. yeah. Okay. Then mm -hmm. the, the tabernacle was at mm -hmm. Shiloh, mm -hmm. but they could have easily taken it. In fact, very close geographically. Verse 19. Mm -hmm. And he smote the men of Beth Shemesh mm -hmm. because they had looked into the ark of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Even his mouth of the people, 50,000 mm -hmm. and three score and ten men. Now, when we read this, uh, it's something like we may wonder why should people be killed because they looked Looking at it? Inside. Let's read the Exodus chapter 19 and verse 21. Mm -hmm. Exodus 19, verse 21. And the Lord. Mm -hmm. Say it unto Moses, mm. go down, charge the people as they break through unto the Lord to gaze, and many of them perish. So at the Ark of the Covenant, who was there? The people of Israel. In the Ark of the Covenant, oh, the glory of the Lord. Lord. Yes. So what happened mm. when it came to Bachemesh, mm. they just casually looked at the Ark. What happened? They were killed. So trouble began right at the border. Wow. Uh, these people must have been so brave and, uh, and foolishly bold. In fact, as if the Bible said they didn't just look on, they looked into. Into. It seems they went and even put off the covering. But what is inside? But, okay, there are two ways of doing it. Mm. They can't touch it anyway. Okay. Because the book of Exodus says, oh. Lest they break through unto the Lord to gaze. To gaze. Mm -hmm. Two things. Either they break mm -hmm. or even to look beholding. Mm -hmm. I think we have another verse, I think, somewhere in Exodus chapter 25. Let's read that one mm -hmm. as well. Gazing. Wow. So, the, the items of God's presence are not actually items of idle curiosity. Mm -hmm. Of gazing for the sake of a gazing. <laughs> Without then a gazing reverence. to be done, it should be beholding, to be e transformed. Exactly. You know, it, it's without reverence. Mm. Sometimes, you know, we, we that, that's why I, sometimes I, I 
I talk about this. And in the presence of God, we are irreverent. Yes, yes. In the, in the presence of God, like, you know, we sometimes take certain things for granted. Mm. And uh, like, say, for example, children roaming around in the, in the sanctuary. Yes. yes. Uh, without, uh, you know. Without any restraint. Exactly. From the, the leading uh, and their parents. Exactly. Mm. Well, I think I've missed that one, but it's, it's somewhere in chapter 20, 25 Exodus. Okay. Uh, but I think we are going to that one mm. later on. We'll look into that. So it says that we should not guess. Like, you know, gazing is like without seriousness. Yes. Gazing is without ha attaching uh, importance to it. I'll give you one example. Okay. When you meet someone of high, with high power, the presidential convoy. Let's uh, let's say the president. When okay. you meet the president, or when okay. you meet the kabaka, okay. you can never look into his eyes. How they? You can never. So, I, I hope you are able to understand. Like you know, when you go to the king, mm. when you go to the president, mm. you 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 will dare not mm. look straight into his eyes. Yes, the looking should be you, you, purpose and. You will only be humble, yes. and you bow. And you look down. Mm. Oh. So now it's the presence of God. Mm. Now, if you're, if you're, if the president is talking and you look at him, <laughs> and then you gaze and you, you're not serious about it. Mm. It sends, it's, it sends a wrong signal saying that you're challenging him and mm. his power mm. and his authority over you. Mm. Maybe an equal can do that. President yeah. Ruto can look at President Museveni yeah, straight eye to eye. Like uh, yeah, look at them and they don't know. It, they're equals, probably. Yes. Okay, but, but for us, a commoner, a civilian, mm. to look at a, a, a bigger person, mm. it's very hard. I mean, it's, it's, it's not right and it's, it's not appropriate. It's yes. just respectful. Mm. So that's the reason why. Now, look at the trouble begins at the border. Now, we should also know that some of the Bethshemists, they, they are not serious about it. Yes. And they don't know mm -hmm. the sanctity mm -hmm. yeah. of the ark. Okay, so they were smart down. Uh -huh, let's go ahead and read. Okay. <coughs> so that uh, we were in. And the new and the and the the, the, the number of people is stunning. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. So that one is now verse nineteen. Nineteen, you know, yes. Just read. Verse twenty says. Mm -hmm. And the men of Beth Shemesh mm -hmm. said. Who is able to stand before this holy Lord God? Mm -hmm. And to whom shall he go up mm -hmm. from us? Mm -hmm. And they sent messengers to the inhabitants of Kiriath Jerim, mm -hmm. saying, The Philistines have brought again the ark of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Come here down and fetch it up to you. <laughs> the ark is going again through the game of sending it off. Hey, come and get your thing. Get your yes, thing. Yeah. Mm. So there is a, 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 a cloud of unseriousness mm. and disrespect again. Okay, mm -hmm. let's read where, chapter 7 and verse 1. Ah, chapter 7, verse 1. And the men of Kiriath, Jerim, came and fetched up the ark of the Lord and brought it into the house of Abinadab in the hill and sanctified Eliezer, his son, to keep the ark of the Lord. So, we have now seen how the ark of the covenant was taken on a tour. Yes. From Eli... The Philistines that is seven it, months. In Ashdod. It, Ashdod is Gath. it mm. troubled them mm. enough mm. until it came to Beth Shemesh. Mm. Beth Shemesh guys they also were not dogs. serious. Yes. In fact, the Beth Shemesh, the, the when God smote them, it was worse. Fifty thousand people died. They didn't just get immersed, they died literally. Literally, they died. So when they died, it was only after. The Levites were, in, I mean, invited. Mm. They brought it down. Mm. So I'm just imagining that, that the cart comes and stops. Mm. These guys just go around. They whistle, call yeah. people, go, go gaze around. One by one, one by one, die. Yeah. 50,000. Mm. Until they had to call. That's when someone was reminded, my dear, this thing, you are, it is not for you and me, a commoner. Mm. Call the Levite. That's when the Levite comes. Mm. They break the wood. Yes. Now they are breaking the cart. Yes. Because they know it's a pagan. It's a pagan practice. Yes. Mm -hmm. They break the cart. 
and build the altar yes the stone yes. and even the the trespass offering those guys sent mm. it was also laid on oh and it was sacrificed wow. that had to go now plain exactly come exactly the, the ark had been made uh, according to God's instruction mm -hmm. with the holes and the rings uh, with rings. The holes in the side i think we should read that mm. let's read uh, exodus still chapter 25, 25. Okay. and uh, I think we can read from 14, Exodus sorry, 13, 25, 25, 13. Yeah, 13. Mm -hmm. Oh, from 12? Yeah, perfect. Okay, 12. And thou shalt cast four rings of gold mm -hmm. for it, mm -hmm. and put them in the four corners thereof, mm -hmm. and the two rings shall be in the one side of it, and two rings in the other side of it. Mm -hmm. 13, and thou shalt make staves, hmm. those are like poles. poles, yes, staves of shitting wood, and overlay them with gold. Verse 14, and thou shalt put the staves into the rings by the side of the ark, that the ark may be born mm -hmm. with them. Lastly, verse 15, the staves shall be in the rings of the ark, they shall not be taken from it. Wow. It's there, it must be there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. So uh, there is a way in which God had instructed them mm -hmm. not to touch the ark, yes. but only to carry the staves. The staves. Wow. Okay. So that's the instruction. So mm -hmm. when the when the when the Levites came, they knew mm -hmm. that they should not do that. Yes. And so they remove the card, they break it, mm -hmm. and then they do the sacrifice. Wow. Uh, uh, it's so interesting to notice that God will never destroy any person arbitrarily without making provision for that person not sin. God has, uh, with every temptation that may assail a person, has put a thousand ways how to evade the temptation. The same way God had made sure that if you didn't want to be destroyed by the ark, there is no way you didn't. Exactly. And every person who either got an emerald or who got killed from beholding the ark, it is forever on their own account that this ever happened. May this be a lesson to us living today, to learn this so long forgotten lesson of reverence before the holy God of Israel. Until the next episode, it is still Uzzah and the Ark. May God bless you.